Well, hey everyone, it is great to see you here again. It has been a little while since we've gotten together. I think it's been like four weeks, but I'm super excited to be joining you here again for our online HPK lesson. Well, for those of you who I have not yet met, my name is Pastor Austin, and I'm the next gen pastor here at High Point Community Church. And as we continue to meet online, we do so in this format, and we want to encourage you to be as energetic here as you would be at our in-person services before this even happened. We want you to get up, we want you to interact with us, we want you to dance and sing and answer questions and do things like that. So get comfortable, have a seat on your couch, have a seat on your floor, and uh, get ready to be involved. All right, well, all month long, this is a whole new month because we haven't seen you guys all March, we've been talking about one of the most important tools you could ever need in your tool belt. But it's not a screwdriver or a wrench or a pair of pliers or even a hammer. No, it's, it's something called forgiveness. Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. And forgiveness is important because forgiveness is up to you. You've got to forgive if you want to fix relationships and make things right. You've got to forgive your friends and family when they mess up. And they've got to forgive you. And with God's help, you can make the choice every day to forgive. And that might sound like some hard work. And just like our, our whole theme this month, DIY, forgiveness is hard. But that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Since forgiveness is one of the very best tools in our tool belt, I think we should have a little tool-minded dance party right here, right now. So, get excited, get on your feet, it's time for the Tool Time Dance Party. That's right. Alright, well, again, this is the Tool Time Dance Party, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show some pictures of tools, various tools on your screen. And when those tools come up, there's going to be some music that starts playing. I want you to create a dance move for each tool. All right, so if you have your whole family with you, you guys can spread out around your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're watching this right now. Even if it's outside, it's beautiful probably today, but you can move around and spread out, and then you guys can do a move that represents each tool. All right, see who has the best dance move, and then in the end, you can compare and uh, have fun with that. So I'm going to show some pictures, and then after our pictures are done, we'll transition into worship for, for today. So it'll kind of just flow right in and then we'll go to our lesson. All right? So, on the count of three, here we go. Three, two, one. I've got joy down in my soul. I'm gonna let this feeling take control. Joy down in my soul this day. And nothing's gonna take you away. Joy down in my soul. I'm gonna let this feeling take control. Whatever comes my way, I'll be okay. Cause I got joy. Oh, I've got joy. Come, sunshine, pouring. When things don't go my way, still my joy can stay. Cause you give me blessings every day. I'm gonna let this feeling take control Joy down in my soul to stay And nothing's gonna take you away Joy down in my soul I'm gonna let this feeling take control Whatever comes my way, I'll be okay
Well, welcome back, guys. Today we have an awesome example of forgiveness from Jesus. When Jesus was here on earth, he taught some amazing things which we can read in the Bible. He also healed people who were sick. He, people would follow Jesus everywhere he went, and they wanted just to see him and to hear what he had to say. Well, one time a great crowd was following Jesus around. So he went up to the side of a mountain and he sat down. His disciples came and he started to teach them. And Jesus taught about a lot of things that day. We can find his words in the book of Matthew. He talked about how important it would be for us to fix our relationships with each other. Listen to what he said in Matthew 5, 23 through 24. Suppose you are offering your gift at the altar, and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift in front of the altar and first go and make peace with them. Then come back and offer your gift. Now today, we don't offer gifts at God's altar. That was what people did in the time before Jesus came. It was kind of like what we do today when we pray or worship God together, or maybe bring an offering, like when you put money in the offering. But what Jesus said that day is still true for us now. If someone is mad at you, if someone has a problem with you, if they need forgiveness or you need to forgive, before you do anything else, go and do what you need to do to make peace with them, to make it right with them. How many of you have ever gotten into an argument with a sibling or a friend, maybe even over a video game? Maybe you were so into that game that you didn't even notice that you were totally hogging the controller. You never gave your friend a turn, and it made them so mad because it seemed like you did it on purpose. So what do you do when you're in a situation like that? Probably argue about it until one of you leaves, or until your mom or dad comes in to stop the yelling and fighting. Video games are fun, but fighting over video games is not very fun. And honestly, are video games so important that they should hurt your relationship? with a friend or family member? Of course not. Now remember, Jesus said that we should make things right with each other before we go to God. That's how important forgiveness is. It is important that we take the first step to say, I'm sorry. It's also important for us to be quick to forgive. Now let's say you're warming up before a soccer game with your team. You've been practicing really hard and you've figured out how to kick the ball in the air over and over again without ever dropping it to the ground. So you kick it around a few times to show your teammates what you can do, but to them it kind of seems like you're showing off. Later you notice that no one is passing you the ball in the game, even though you're wide open. What do you do in that situation? Do you get mad at your teammates for acting that way? I mean, it's, it's not like you were trying to show off, you've just been practicing really hard and you wanted to practice some more. Do you wait for them to come to their senses and apologize? Or do you decide that you should be the one to make it right? You can make the first move. You can say that you're sorry for showing off. You can say that you don't want anything to get in the way of your relationships as teammates. Think about what it would be like for your teammates to hear that from you. If you came to them to apologize, do you think they'd be willing to forgive you? I bet they would. You see, when you take a step to say you're sorry and ask for forgiveness... Or, or when you forgive someone who's wronged you, you make things right. You fix the relationship. And, what feels, and that feels so good. You turn something that was a big problem into a celebration. It can be really hard for us to see where we've messed up. It really can, even as adults, even as pastors. But we can ask God to show us. Sometimes we can just sort of sense when someone is upset at us. I'm sure you've probably thought that too. But we don't know why sometimes. In those moments, we need to have the courage to take the first step and ask. When we find out that someone or something uh, that we might have done wrong, we might be tempted to try and defend ourselves, honestly. Like, I didn't do that, or I didn't mean to say that, or I didn't try and hurt you. And we might think about all the reasons why we were right to act the way we did. But if we really want to make things right with someone, 
We should take what they say seriously. We should be willing to ask for forgiveness if someone feels offended by what we've said or done. If we have a problem with someone, we should do whatever we can to fix the relationship. We should be willing to say we're sorry to ask for forgiveness. In the same way, we should be willing to forgive someone when they have wronged us. Here's our bottom line for today. Take the first step to forgive others. Don't let the hurt build up. Don't hold something against your friend when, uh, when you could just get it out in the open. And with God's help, we can find the courage to make the first move and make things right. Here's a memory verse for today. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3.13 Let's pray today and ask that God would help us to forgive. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this message of hope and forgiveness for one another. Lord, we know that you hold relationships in such high regard that you know they are so important for us, Lord, to, to get along with each other, especially as a church family. God, we pray that if there are kids listening to this uh, this story today or family members, parents, whoever they may be, Lord, if there is something that they have done to wrong someone else, or if, if someone else has done something to wrong them, that you would help them to seek forgiveness. Help them to seek restoration. Help them to seek ways that they can say that they are sorry or that they can fix the relationship. Help us to remember that you sought forgiveness for all of us so that we could have restored, healed relationships, God. You know how important it is. So go with us today, God. Help us to be in the mode of seeking restoration, seeking healing, seeking forgiveness. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us here this week. We are excited to maybe be back with you again next week. And certainly as things continue to open up, we hope to see you and your family in service in person one day soon. So we will talk to you all later and know that you are being prayed for this week. Have a great day and a great week of school. We'll see ya. I can't contain